it is time to check in with Robin and see what he is up to with Robin number three through number six. These issues have a story by Chuck Dixon, pencils by Tom Grummet, inks by Ray Crissing, colors by Adrian Roy, lettering by Tim Harkins and Albert de Guzman, Harkins for the first issue, de Guzman for the other two, and all are edited by Jordan B. Gorfinkel and the legendary Denny O'Neill. As we begin, Tim Drake is on winter break. Hey, that rhymes. So he's staying in his dad's apartment downtown. Makes him close to downtown where the action is, and well away from the Batcave in John Paul, and with this closer to Ariana. This is good, because unlike Jean Paul, Tim is no Scrooge, and so he's going after some goons who are breaking into houses. One guy pulls a gun and tries to shoot Robin, only to get tangled in some um, lighting decorations around the house and dangling off the side of the building after he knocks himself out. It feels like this guy would end up in the DC Universe version of what the fuck is wrong with you alongside the guy who managed to break his own hand by trying to punch Batman in the most armored, visibly armored part of the torso. Elsewhere, Clue Master is putting together his gang's first job, while Executioner complains at the TV, and Zonk, the third member of the group, wants a costume. Ultimately, Executioner gets mad at Wheel of Fortune and fries the TV, which draws the attention of the manager and forces the, clear, the trio to clear out. Back home, Ariana calls Tim and asks if he's seeing someone else. He says there isn't, but he also blows the answer to the question with a level of grace that only Peter Parker could hope to match, which honestly makes me wish that when we'd gotten the Marvel, various Marvel and DC crossovers, we didn't get Robin Spi Spider-Man. At Stephanie Brown's place, her mom is addicted to pre prescription painkillers, and with her dad, the Clue Master, out of jail, she's planning to go take him down again. Back at the hotel, where Clue Master and crew have cleared out, Bullock and Montoya have arrived, along with Shotgun Smith, because this is outside of the Gotham City limits, which puts this into county. So Smith and Bullock get in a jurisdiction-waving contest, and while Montoya attempts to be diplomatic, Smith has none of that and responds with both misogyny and racism. Yeah. Fuck Shotgun Smith. Not only are all Gotham cops kind of bastards, uh, Gotham County, definitely bastards. At their next hideout, Clue Master explains the plan for the heist, and Zonk unveils his costume. He also wants to try doing the Clue thing. Clue Master explains why he stopped, and Zonk doesn't mention that he'd already decided to leave a Clue on hotel stationery for Bullock. Meanwhile... Robin goes to break into Clue Master's gang's old hotel room to look for evidence and hoping to avoid Shotgun Smith in the process, only to run into the spoiler as the issue ends. The next issue starts with Spoiler apologizing for laying out Robin at the end of last issue. We get a rundown that Robin knows Spoiler's identity, but not vice versa. They discuss Clue Master's next target, only to be interrupted by an argument outside between Bullock and Smith's deputy. Bullock says that he's got a warrant, and the deputy is refusing to respect it, so Bullock and Montoya push past him. Robin and Spoiler hide under the beds, and here Bullock mentions they were mailed a clue on hotel stationery, so Robin grabs the notepad from the room. Smith arrives and drives off Bullock and Montoya when it turns out they don't actually have a warrant, which in turn allows Robin and Spoiler to escape. Smith rants that Robin was actually was a dirty cop and Smith was fighting corruption his way before Gordon drove him out, mentioning Tricorner. This is presumably something that will play out over future Bat Family books. Robin puts together the target, a shipment of old money sent for disposal, a plan that Mafia 3, if you've played that game, will borrow as part of that game's opening heist. The heist almost goes off without a hitch, with the trio taking out the guards at the armored car. There's just one catch. As Robin jumps Clue Master, the two get locked in the back of the car. That means with Executioner and Headbanger, which is Zonk's new supervillain name, move to step two of the plan, which is bury the armored car and wait for the heat to die down, Clue Master and Robin are buried alive. 
Is this the end of Riders in the Sky? In the last issue of this, uh, the spoiler saw Executioner and Headbanger bury the armored car and is now trying to figure out the full plan on her own since Robin didn't leave a note. Which, class, this is why you communicate with your teammates. It's important. Now, in the armored car itself, underneath the concrete, Clue Master takes this predicament about as well as can be expected. Let me clue you in. No pun intended. Uh, where are we? Well, as you may remember, that we're in the back of an armored car that you and your buddies heisted. And as far as I can tell, we're in a hole in the ground that's full of concrete. Maybe you can explain why that is. Oh my god. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I hit him with a mild anesthetic. Not a lot of air in here. Screaming is not going to make it last any longer. To be fair to Clue Master, he currently expects them to be buried for a while. Robin doesn't know that yet. Spoiler tails the two goons and hears them gripe and moan up from the adjoining hotel room about the plot. In the back of the armored car, Robin explains to Clue Master that the Fed punches a pattern of holes into the bills before shipping them for disposal so that you can't pass them as currency. Which is, to go back to Mafia 3 for a second, why in the prologue the old bills wasn't the initial goal of the heist, it was a Trojan horse to get at the real prize of the contents of the reserve. The money in the armored car, they can't use. In fact, I think they mentioned that in voiceover dialogue. Also, in all of this, in grand Spider-Man style, Tim is unintentionally standing up Ariana. Speaking of which, back underground, Tim regrets never learning to mediate his heart rate. See the Robin miniseries I covered earlier as to what he ended up learning instead. At the hotel, Shotgun Smith and then his deputies raid the hotel room, forcing Spoiler's hand. She causes a distraction so that the goons can escape. The two hightail it back to the construction site with Spoiler covertly following behind, where she sees the goons digging up the truck. Headbanger cuts open the side and jumps in, only to get knocked out by Robin, while Spoiler brings down Executioner. Robin climbs out of the truck, happy to be alive, and gives Spoiler a big spooch. Smooch. Robin, uh, uh, Spoiler says that she'd like to work with Robin again among other things, before the police show up, forcing them to bail before they can continue this conversation earlier, uh, further and forcing Robin to consider the possibility of the situation here between the women in his life. This is a fun storyline. does a great job of continuing with the concept of Tim Drake as DC's Spider-Man, not in terms of power set, but in terms of of the types of stories that are told with the character. The focus on balancing the personal life and the superhero life in ways which have significantly more complications to them to a student, not be it a teenage teenager in high school or a college student or what have you, that are less forefronted than they would be with Batman with his significant riches letting you kind of flake out with a degree of impunity or with um, Clark Kent as Superman where honestly part of the reason he's able to help he's able to cover for himself is because of his own super speed um, that sort of thing whereas Robin because he doesn't have powers and he's also, while well, he's well off, he is not in the position where he can flake in with impunity that way in the ways that Bruce can makes things different and works well here. Now when we return to the Nightfall saga, we're gonna switch back to Asbad again as we finally find out what the Joker has been up to. Thank you very much.
very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and in future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. And the coffee a few bucks also helps support the show and it's not a monthly obligation or